you get both of them. Does that make sense? So pretty much it says if you get any portion of it, that satisfies the or. So for us, or means, first it means the union of two sets. The and was intersection. The or means a union. So a union says, take all of it. That counts as or. You with me on this? And was just this portion, this little bit that count, that was in both our sets. Or is the union. It takes everything. So or is the union of two sets. And what we were just talking about is or is the el or is the elements that is common to both sets or in either one. Or I can say this differently. The elements that are in one set or the other set or even in both sets. Intersection, intersection had that N, that N. Union has, what do you think? Union. Ooh, you probably saw that in homework if you started your homework. You're like, oh, what's that mean? What's that little, what's that U mean? That U, it's not really a U because it doesn't have a tail, but it stands for a union. That symbol says union. It says the OR. That's the OR for us. And it represents the elements that are in either one set or the other OR in both sets. Let's look at a Venn diagram and see how this is a little bit different than our, our and. Let's say that's set A, that's set B. Can you identify the and, the intersection of these sets? <coughs> yeah, that's the intersection right there. Here's what OR says. OR says it, it could be here, or it could be here, or it could even be in both. But no matter where it is, it counts for the OR. Does that make sense to you? That's the union. It takes everything in. So our or is all of that. All of that and the middle part. Or is everything in either set. Listen, does it have to be in both sets no. to count for or? No, it just has to be in, in at least one of them. Does it already include the intersection? Look at that. It includes the intersection right there. It's there. So the or says it's here or here or it could be a both. Everything that happens, we're counting that as our or. Let's go ahead and do a couple examples. So this would, this would be the whole thing is A union B. Let's do a couple examples to illustrate this real quick. Here's one set, one, two, three, four, five. I want to find the union with this other set. Three, four, five, six. Let's go ahead and find the union here. Hey, firstly, could you tell me what the intersection is for this set? Good, that's what's common to both of them. We covered that last time. The union is not necessarily what's common to both, just what happens. So let's see what numbers happen. Uh, does zero happen? Is zero going to be in the union? No. Uh, zero is not actually common to both of them, so, or, or either one of them. That's what we're looking for. What's common to either one or both? So what's the first number in our union going to be? One. Yeah, one occurs here. Does it occur here? No, but it doesn't matter. As long as it occurs once, at least once, that's what we're, we're talking about for a union. So a union says, yeah, one's there. What else is there? Two. Two is there. Somebody else, what else is there? Three. Yeah, even though three shared, that still is okay for our union. All right, so 
as long as it's in one, at least one of them. So three, good. What, what else is there, folks? Four, uh -huh. five, six. Yeah, six is there also because six, well, it's not in this one, it's over here. It occurred at least once. Is there any other numbers that we have missed? Okay. That's it then. Notice how we just list out the numbers one time, even though it occurred twice here, three and three, four and four, five and five, we're just listing out once. Okay, we don't have to double count that. We always got it. You guys have a good idea about the orb? Mm -hmm. Let's do one more example, then we'll move on, show you how this is applied to some inequalities. Really don't have an eraser today? That's awesome. This was so good, we never have to erase it. That's what that meant. I hope this isn't like a blow your nose towel. <laughs> really gross. Okay, let's say. A is the set X, such that X is an odd integer greater than 0, less than 20. That's going to make it less than 14. B is the numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What I want you to do is find the union of A and B. So where is A and B have any elements at all? Did you find it? Yeah. So we just have to think about what elements even occur in either A or B or both. So let's look at A first. We'll list out the A's and then we'll take the B's. What's the first number in set A? I think we've had these, this exact example before. Yeah, one's up there. What are the, the other elements in A? Nine, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So eight's up there? What occurs in... Oh, you know what? I forgot a word. <laughs> there we go. Um, that changes my answer then. Yeah, that changes everybody's answer. My bad. Otherwise, you're like, well, wait a second. That's, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> let's go ahead and let's do an odd integer. My bad. An odd integer. What are the odd integers between 0 and 9, basically? Okay, so there's five of them. So automatically, 1, 3, Five, seven, nine. Those have to be in our set automatically because they're they're in A alone. Are you with me on this? Mm -hmm. Now we're going to count the ones in B that haven't already occurred, and that's how we're going to figure out what's in the union. So what ones are in B that aren't necessarily in set A? You tell me those. Two, four, six. So two's got to be there. Four's got to be there. Six. How about eight? Does eight is eight going to be in our? No. No? So just one, two, three, four, five, six, 
7, and then 9. The blue numbers, those are from set A. The black numbers, those are from set B. We don't double count them. That's our union. How many people feel okay with that one? Good deal. Now let's look to see how this is applied to some inequalities. So first set, let's say x such that x is less than or equal to 1. <clears throat> Second set, we'll say x is greater than or equal to 3. I want you to think of these numbers again. Can you think of the numbers that are up here, x, such that x is less than or equal to 1? Give me some numbers in this set. What's one number? Negative 5. Negative 5 would work. What's another number? 0. 0 would work. What else? Negative infinity. Negative infinity, sure, that's not really a number itself. Negative, but yeah. two. <laughs> Negative 2 would happen. What about 1? Is 1 included in that? Yes. 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 Sure. How about 0. 0.5? Mm -hmm. How about 2? No. How about 1.5? No. Okay, good. How about this one? Let's think of some numbers in x is greater than or equal to 3. What are those numbers? 3. 3 works. What else? 4, 7, 5, anything bigger than that 3. So if I were to graph this, which I'm going to do after drawing this inequality, I'm going to be looking for x such that x is less than or equal to 1 or x is greater than or equal to 3. We're going to graph these at the same time, just like we did for our AND inequalities. It's very, very similar. So it's a number line. We have to put our numbers on there. They don't have to be to scale. They just have to be in order. So it has to go 1 and 3 because that's, of course, a number line. We noticed last time that if our x's come first, this kind of points in the direction that we want to graph. So from 1, are we going to go up and to the right or up and to the left? Which one? Left. Yeah, left. Because we have less than 1, numbers less than then one or to the left of one. So we're going this way. How about at three? X is greater than or equal to three. Can you tell me, folks, which numbers are greater than or equal to three? The ones to the right or the ones to the left? Right. So we're going to go up and to the right. Do you guys feel okay with that graph? Is there a crossover? No. All right. Here's one thing I'm going to ask you to do. I want to make sure you see this. If I asked you for this, let's say this was A and this is B. If I asked you for A and B, what's the intersection of A and B? Is there any intersection? Yeah. If it asks you that and it looks like this, well you'd put that. There is no intersection. There's no crossover. Are you with me folks? Now if I'm going to ask you for this, a or B, or A union B, yeah, there is a union out of this. The union is anything that just takes place on your graph. So it's, you take every different interval and you just mash it together. That's what OR says. It says if it exists, then we're going to label it in interval notation. So let's look at this. How many intervals do we have up here? The only one that we don't have? Name the only interval that we don't have. Two. What do you mean two? Oh, well, what about like 1.001? Isn't that a number up there? And 2.73, 2 that, that's a number up here. The only range of numbers that we don't have, we've got this one, right?